So a lot of students ask me, where does Chubbacorn come from? How did I come up with Chubbacorn? And the answer is, um, it's kind of funny, it's kind of funny story. It takes place in two different developmental periods uh, of me as an artist. So one, the first start of it came about, uh, about between 1992 and 1995. So somewhere, I don't know exactly when because I didn't uh, write a date on, on this particular uh, first drawing I did. Uh, but uh, it was a character they came up with. He's right here. So he's called, he was called Beep Beep. And so Beep Beep is a little guy that um, is a chubby little character that has two horns, two golden horns, and monster truck tires. And he never really said anything except Beep Beep. So that's what he was known as. Um, and uh, just a little wordless character. And so I drew him a couple times in some images and and then didn't really do much else with him. But fast forward to about 2008, 2009. So it was about my second year of teaching. I was grading art starts. Now art starts in my class, if you are a student, you know, you know uh, what they are. Uh, you either love them or hate them because they're the opening activity of my class. So for example, you walk into class and on the board it'll say, you know, draw this building and add a funny billboard advertising um, a crazy cereal that just came out. Uh, so the students have to draw what's on the board and then add something. So in the case of uh, the Chubbacorn um, influence, the week was mythological creatures. And so the particular day was asking students to draw a unicorn. And I think it was to draw someone riding on the unicorn's back or draw the background or something. I forget what it was to add, but the point is, I asked students um, you know, to draw a unicorn. And so the following week when I was actually grading the art starts, I found one that was a really funny version of what I had drawn on the board. It was very simple. It was basically uh, a creature that had a 90 degree angle, so it had its oval body bent upwards with a snout. It did have like a mane and then a tail and a horn, but no ears, um, and then just two eyes and a mouth, that, and the mouth was on the snout and then just really simple stumpy feet. So I took that drawing and I just started playing around and doodling and I said, okay, what if you shave off the snout and then you have this really funny looking horse character that has no snout, but the mouth is now um, part of the head and then everything else is the same. Then I took off uh, the mane, I took off the tail uh, and it started to get more funny to me because it just looked really stumpy and awkward uh, I left the horn, of course, and then I straightened out the the body, so it was just a simple oval shape, uh, keeping the stumpy feet, and then the face and the horn. So just the essential components of a unicorn. So horn, face, stumpy horse-like hoof, feet, and that's it. And then, you know, blunt, round body, stubby body. And so that's basically how Chubbacorn came to be. I looked at the drawing and I thought, this is really a funny little character. It's really awkward looking. It's very derpy. So um, I thought, well, it's chubby. It's a part unicorn. So Chubbicorn is how the name came, uh, kind of stuck. And then so, um, so that was about 2008 or 9 is when Chubbicorn was first conceived. Then I'm digging through um, some old papers recently, some of my old um, uh, portfolio work. So sketches and stuff that I keep in a, a cabinet, a closed cabinet. And by the way, I highly recommend that students keep as many of their old drawings and sketchbooks as possible because uh, it's, it serves as for two purposes. So in the distant future, or even the near future, if you, if you can look back at your sketchbook and laugh at how bad the drawings are, that tells you you've improved quite a bit because your drawings of the past are a joke to you because you've, you've, you've leveled up so much. On the other hand, it provides a treasure trove of information. So for example, like I, I'll crack open any one of my books in here, my old sketchbooks, and I'll see ideas that I you know, that I came up with years ago that maybe if I polish them up a little bit, I could you know, make them something new or, or um, bring them back to life, so to speak. Because there's so many characters that have fallen by the wayside as I've uh, just built worlds you know, over time. So sketchbooks that you save serve as reference for future you know, uh, creative blocks and also a reference point for how, how far you've come. Anyway, I'm digging through the paperwork, my old stuff, and I find Beep Beep, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, that's awesome, that's basically Chebocorn, but with one horn that's straight and then stumpy feet. He has the same coloration, uh, 
same golden horn. I mean, this was painted, you know, in, in the mid nineties. You can see how badly it's, it's drawn. If you can get it, like I'll zoom in, you can see how like how blotchy it is. I think it's done with like a Sharpie to outline it. Um, so anyway, yeah, so Chevacorn had, the early version of him was, was created in the nineties. And then it took a student's, an influence of a student, um, who I'm, uh, my students, I'm, I'm very much inspired by, you know, I, I learn a lot from them. Uh, so a student's drawing brought that whole idea back in a, in a weird way. So that's where Chubacorn came from.